The world is facing a big medical problem. A growing number of patients and not enough doctors to treat them. So could artificial intelligence be the cure? I feel like I'm working at the forefront of something that could potentially be revolutionary to healthcare in the future. AI has the power to transform the ways patients are diagnosed and treated. And we think it will become a game changer. And to make the testing of new medical procedures more efficient and effective. And if we can get devices that can be developed faster, uh, better uh, and quicker, uh, then there are huge benefits. Elaine Manor is blind in one eye. She is a victim of age-related macular degeneration, the most common cause of blindness in the UK and US. When it went to my other eye, I was just terrified. I was in bits. I was weeping in the rain and thinking, I don't want to be here. For years, the threat of losing her other eye has loomed large, until a successful treatment enabled the thankful 75-year-old to see her way to some high-wire fundraising. I did the highest zip wire in Europe. I did the skydive, and then I did the, the wing wall. But the doctor who saved Elaine's eyes says she is one of the lucky ones. Nearly 10% of all clinic appointments in the NHS are for eyes. That's nearly 10 million appointments per year. So to put it brutally, we're almost drowning in the number of patients we need to see. And as a result of that, there are some patients, unfortunately, who go blind because of delays in being seen and treated. A pregnant mother was left almost completely blind waiting for care. She has since given birth and has never seen her daughter's face. Dr. Keane believes there's an answer. Artificial intelligence. He and his partners have developed AIs, which can diagnose over 50 types of eye disease, just as well as a doctor, but do so much, much more quickly. The AI system can analyze the retinal scans within seconds and it can delineate all of the different disease features on the scans. A human expert would probably take hours or even days to complete the same task. AI can help to address a growing global challenge. In 2020, an estimated 596 million people had distance vision impairment worldwide, of whom 43 million were blind. By 2050, both these figures are set to increase by approximately 50%. A task that can take specialist doctors hours, now being done in seconds through artificial intelligence. And it's not just eyesight. AI's ability to mine and analyse patient data far more quickly than humans can mean diagnoses could improve in many areas of medicine. We do more than a thousand scans per day in the hospital. It's a challenge because where do we get the, the human experts to be able to review all those scans? But it's also an opportunity because that huge amount of data is the perfect substrate for the development of artificial intelligence systems. But there are concerns, in particular threats to the privacy of patients. DeepMind, Google's AI company, and one of Dr. Keane's partners has found itself under fire. Google DeepMind, the search giant's artificial intelligence arm, may have received the personally identifying medical records of 1.6 million NHS patients here at the Royal Free Hospital on a legally inappropriate basis. Unrelated to its work with Dr. Keane, DeepMind is currently facing legal action over its use of NHS data. Yet if data can be better protected, AI has the capacity to make patient care much better and more efficient. So we have a world that is essentially very much connected, but yet healthcare data is siloed. We can order a taxi from almost anywhere in the world using our smartphones, but yet 
if we have a patient who comes to an eye hospital like Moorfields, but they're also attending a hospital because they've got cancer, we often can't easily connect their data. Dr. Keane hopes his latest collaboration with machine learning startup Bitfount could not only join DataDots better, but also improve patient privacy. Bitfount is, is a kind of switchboard. All we do is essentially pass messages between someone who wants to ask something of the data set and the owner of the data. The data never, never leaves its home location. So if that data is held by a hospital, no data ever leaves the hospital. Bitfount says this technology could have other benefits, like approving new treatments more quickly and safely. Patients are losing out a lot by the fact that ideal medical treatments for them are not coming through to, to market. With the extra technical guarantees that privacy-preserving techniques like Bitfount uh, can provide, there's been a, a real feeling around the healthcare ecosystem that that could speed up a lot of those governance processes. By 2027, AI's value in the healthcare market is expected to be eight times bigger than in 2020. Growth could also be boosted if clinicians reduce their dependence on coders and start to develop their own AI systems. This is really exciting because to date, retinal experts have been unable to identify gender. Dr. Kira O'Byrne is part of a team of clinicians who have managed to do what Google Brain did in 2018, develop AI that can recognize gender from retinal scans, something no human can do. A member of our research group developed a code-free deep learning model which accurately identified gender from retinal images. So this is incredibly exciting because by positioning clinicians to develop their own models independently, it could really open the door to further discoveries in both disease patterns and disease biomarkers. A new generation of doctors believe empowering clinicians in this way will bring them closer to patients. Generally, it's the clinician, it's the healthcare workers working face to face with the patient who understand what the patients need best. So therefore, I believe that if we can allow them to independently develop their own tools, this will allow the patient to remain at the very forefront of everything. It's the world's first handheld, battery-powered computer, able to hold thousands of data points. I think that we're potentially at a tipping point, a little bit like the tipping point that we saw in the late 1970s in the computing industry. We had the introduction of the first personal computers. If you empower people with this technology, even if primitive in the beginning, they will come up with hundreds or even thousands of applications that the engineers would never have thought of. But some are skeptical about pinning hopes too fast on AI. The issue is that AI models are essentially black boxes. And so what happens is that when they're working well, they're working well and no questions are asked. But what happens if uh, a wrong decision is made? What happens when something goes wrong? And how do we really trace that back and ensure accountability and uh, guarantee interpretability if we're using these black box models? While it is early days for AI in medicine, it could also improve the testing of new medical devices. A long time ago, a million years BC, everything was absolutely free. In 2021, former part-time singer and model Patricia Walker had an artificial valve inserted into her heart to save her life. I needed a new valve because the one that I had wasn't working, it was dripping. This is why I was feeling uh, the pain that I was getting, the exhaustion, and it, it, it was getting worse. Although Patricia's operation was a success, it was not without risk. And the cardiologist who inserted the valve says AI can make new technologies like this safer for patients by creating virtual trials. So if we can plan a procedure by simulating that procedure in an individual patient in a computer-generated model before we go to the patient, then we can get a much better outcome in the patient without posing any risk to that patient at all. At the University of Leeds, Dr. Blackman is collaborating with Professor Alex Frangi. He is using machine learning to automate the building of three-dimensional digital replicas. This is the real one and this is the fake one, uh, but it's very difficult to the naked eye to, to pick that up. 
Virtual trials mean multiple variations of a proposed new procedure or technology can be tried out. We can test different scenarios of treatment on the same anatomy and physiology of a given virtual individual. And that's something which is not, again, possible to do with conventional trials. We're also comparing different scenarios of hypotensive and normotensive conditions. Virtual trials do not replace human trials, but they do speed up the time and reduce the money required to identify the right devices and humans to test. In 2021, the team at the University of Leeds found their virtual trials produced the same results as three clinical trials, but much more efficiently. Each of those studies took between six and eight years to, to be undertaken, and they probably cost around 20 to 30 million each of them. So what we showed is that in this computational study that the execution of it took about three months. So that's, you know, less than 20 grand. Some working in the medical world believe a bright future lies ahead as AIs become more sophisticated and more capable. In other words, more intelligent. AI 1.0, in my view, is the ability to automate tasks that otherwise could be very boring or time-consuming or repetitive. AI 2.0 is the one that actually tries to look at incorporating prior information on the physics, on the physiology, in a much more intimate manner with the data. So it's not just data-driven, but it's also knowledge-driven. For healthcare, it's hard to see a future without AI. I strongly believe that one day artificial intelligence will renew this eye. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Standage, Deputy Editor of The Economist. To read more of our coverage of AI, please click on the link and don't forget to subscribe.